Galileo Galilei, who lived from 1564 until 1642, was the first person to accurately describe the trajectory of a projectile. Based on experiments, he realised that the motion of a projectile has two components, a constant horizontal velocity and a constant vertical acceleration due to gravity. Projectiles follow a parabolic path. The only force acting on a projectile after launch is the force due to gravity, which is directed downwards towards the centre of the Earth. You can see in the diagram that the projectile is shown with a parabolic path. Delta x is the x displacement or the range of the projectile in metres. U is the initial velocity made up of components U subscript Y and U subscript X. V is the final velocity and is made up of components V subscript Y and V subscript X. Theta is the angle to the horizontal of U, the initial velocity. H is the maximum height attained by the projectile. And it's also marked in there that at H, at maximum height, the vertical velocity of the projectile is going to be equal to zero. The vertical y and horizontal x component of a projectile's motion can be resolved and combined using trigonometry and Pythagoras' theorem. Resolving vector components. The vertical component of a vector v, which is v subscript y, is given by v sine theta whereas the x component, the horizontal component, is equal to v cos theta. Vectors can be combined using Pythagoras and trigonometry, such that the magnitude of a resultant vector can be calculated using the formula v squared equals v subscript x squared plus v subscript y squared and theta equals v subscript y over v subscript x. The velocity in the x direction is constant, ignoring air resistance. Therefore, v subscript x squared equals u subscript x squared, where v subscript x is the final velocity in meters per second, and u subscript x is the initial velocity in meters per second. Therefore, we can say, that v subscript x equals u subscript x. Delta x, the x displacement, is equal to u subscript x multiplied by t time. In the y, or vertical direction, there is a constant acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. Therefore, v subscript y equals u subscript y plus a subscript y t, where v subscript y is the final y velocity in meters per second, u subscript y is the initial y velocity in meters per second, a subscript y is the y acceleration in meters per second squared, and t is time. Also, v subscript y squared equals u subscript y squared plus 2a subscript y delta y, where v subscript y is the final y velocity in meters per second, u subscript y is the initial y velocity in meters per second, a subscript y is the y acceleration in meters per second squared, and delta y is the y displacement in meters, and delta y equals u subscript y t plus one half a subscript y t squared, where delta y is the y displacement in meters, u subscript y is the initial y velocity, t is time in seconds, and a subscript y is the y acceleration in meters per second squared. Escape velocity is the minimum velocity needed for a projectile to escape entirely from the gravitational field of another body, which is usually a planet or a star. It is the velocity needed to reach the point where gravitational potential energy is zero, with zero kinetic energy remaining. 
As a projectile is a closed system, the sum of the initial kinetic and potential energy E subscript Ki plus E subscript Pi equals the sum of the final kinetic and potential energy E subscript Kf plus E subscript Pf. Therefore, we can say that E subscript Ki plus E subscript Pi are equal to zero. As a projectile, when it reaches the point where the gravitational potential energy is zero, by definition has zero kinetic energy remaining. Therefore, E subscript Ki equals minus E subscript Pi. Putting in the formulas for kinetic and potential energy, one half mv squared equals capital G little m big M on R. And this can be rearranged to give the escape velocity into the form V escape velocity equals the square root of 2 G M on R, where G is the universal gravitational constant, M is the mass of the planet or other body from which the projectile is escaping, and R is the initial distance from which the projectile is launched. For Earth, the escape velocity is approximately 40,200 km an hour. Newton's concept of escape velocity. Newton imagined a cannon on top of a tall mountain, firing projectiles at ever greater velocity, until the rate of fall of the projectile equals the curvature of the Earth, and the projectile entered orbit. Increasing the velocity of the projectile further would lead to increasingly elliptical orbits until a velocity was reached where the projectile escaped entirely from the Earth's gravitational field. The effect of the Earth's spin and orbit on the launch of a rocket. Because the Earth is spinning on its axis and orbiting the Sun, the motion of the Earth is going to affect the launch of a rocket. At the equator, the Earth's surface is rotating at approximately 465.1 meters per second, or 1,675 kilometers an hour. The Earth also travels at an approximate average of 2.98 by 10 to the 4 meters per second, or 108,000 kilometers an hour, in its orbit around the Sun. History of rocketry. Konstantin Tsiolkovsky was a Russian mathematician and theorist. He developed the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation, which relates fuel use to acceleration. He also calculated the minimum speed needed for a projectile to reach orbit. Hermann Oberth was a German physicist and engineer who conceived of the Oberth effect and promoted interest in rocketry, developing equations for spaceflight. Robert H. Goddard was an American engineer, professor, physicist and inventor. He launched the world's first liquid-fueled rocket using alcohol and liquid oxygen to reduce the overall mass of the rocket. Esnault Pelterie invented the term astronautics. Amongst 200 patents that he took out during his lifetime are patents for thrust vectoring. He carried out experiments with liquid and solid-fueled rockets. O'Neill theorised about human colonies in space and suggested Lagrange points for these. He also suggested the use of rotational gravity in space colonies. Von Braun was in charge of the V2 program during World War II for the Germans and demonstrated gyroscopic stabilisation on large rockets. After World War II, he worked for the US Army and then for NASA, notably on the Apollo program. Rockets and the Conservation of Momentum Rockets work on the principle of the conservation of momentum. The total momentum of any closed system is constant. Therefore, the initial momentum, rho subscript i, equals the final momentum, rho subscript f, where rho is momentum is equal to mv, mass in kilograms multiplied by v, velocity in meters per second. The change in momentum of the exhaust gases equals the change in momentum of the rocket in a given time interval. Therefore, minus delta rho subscript E over T equals delta rho subscript R over T. 
The change in momentum over time is equal to the force. Therefore, the force of the rocket on the gases is equal in magnitude to the force of the gases on the rocket, but opposite in direction and therefore opposite in sign. Minus F subscript rocket on gases, the force of the rocket on the gases, is equal to F subscript gases on rocket, the force of the gases on the rocket. The force of the rocket on the exhaust gases equals the force of the gases on the rocket. As a rocket burns its fuel, the mass of the rocket decreases, but thrust remains constant. Therefore, the acceleration of the rocket increases. Typically, 90% of the mass of a rocket is fuel at launch. G-forces are the ratio of the apparent weight of a person or other mass to the weight force experienced on the surface of the Earth. G-force equals apparent weight over true weight, equals ma over mg, mass times acceleration over mass times acceleration due to gravity, is equal to a acceleration over g acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. Thank you for watching.